Hello, this is Dr. C, and we're going to be talking about a very important software engineering topic, working with JUnit, solution to all your programming needs and problems. So what is JUnit? JUnit is a unit testing tool. It is there to help you. It supports what's called test-driven development, also known as agile programming. And there's a lot of information out there on the web about JUnit. And go to www.junit.org and you'll find all kinds of information about it. We're going to be talking about how to use uh, JUnit with Java, but because uh, test-driven development is so important, you're going to be able to find uh, test-driven development tools for just about any programming language that you may use. So what I want to do is let's jump in and we will look at a, write a very simple program in a test-driven development mode and see how we can use JUnit to help us with it. Okay, so let's go over to uh, NetBeans because NetBeans has a built-in capability for running JUnit that you're going to find uh, very attractive. You don't need NetBeans to do this, uh, but it just makes things easier, and that's the example we're going to use. So I've got a package here. Uh, just set, set up a package earlier. I'm going to create a Java class, and I'm going to call it. I'm going to call the class uh, my Agile Test. So I'm going to set up this class, my Agile Test. I've got the comments up here. I'm going to close that out, and what I want to do with this class is I want to write a function that will add, if I keep it very simple, so public int add. Now, to make life interesting, I'm going to pass it two string parameters, as you see. And that's the function I want. But since we're doing test-driven development, I'm not going to really put any functionality in the in the, the code, I'm going to start with the test, and then that's going to drive my um, activity with respect to the code. Now, but I've got to get a skeleton class going, and this is the function that I want to ultimately create and have it work uh, very well. But as you can see, uh, NetBeans is not letting me uh, compile. It's telling me, well, you have a function that returns an int, so you've got to return something. So let's say return a zero, and now everybody's happy. Uh, there's no main here, but uh, we have a syntactically correct program. So now what I want to do is I want to have JUnit test this particular piece of code. And so what I can do is I've got my, uh, I've got my class open. I go up to the Tools menu up here, and I should have something that says Create JUnit Test. So all I have to do is select JUnit tests and what it's going to do is create a separate class for me based on the name of my class. So my class was as you see my agile test. It's in the package agile JUnit. So this class is also going to be in the same package and it's going to be called my agile test test. It depends the word test to the name of the class. So this is my agile test test. Okay. And then you can do code generation whatever you want to select here. I'm going to select everything and now, bingo, we now have a new class called My Agile Test Test. And what you're going to see here is a, uh, a number of functions that have been created for you. Most of these you can ignore right away. This is a before and after and before. And this is to set things up when you're doing extensive testing. So if you want to find out more about that, you can look at it. But now we ro scroll down here and we see the heart of the testing. This, for every method, that was in the class that we had previously, it was only one, um, it will generate a test function, a test method for you. And it will put the Java annotation at test in front of this function that it has created for you. This is very important. This is how it works. This is uh, JUnit uh, 4 works by Java annotations. So it's very simple. Um, and so the output is the following, or you see what the the JUnit has generated. It prints something that it's going to be testing your add function. And it knows that your the function that it's testing, add, takes two strings. So it sets things up for you to put some strings in here. So let's put some strings in, two, and put another string in, two. And 
Notice what it does. It creates a new instance of the class, my Agile test, and it calls it instance. And we have an expected result. It knows that this function returns an integer, so it begins by saying the expected result is going to be zero. Here we actually make a call to add S1, S2, and we get the result. And this is the end on this line on C line 50 is the essence of JUnit, the introduction of assertion statements. So what we want is we assume assume you're going to know what the result of your your test is given two parameters. So two and two is going to be expected result. It's going to be four, okay. And uh, if everything is okay, if it asserts equals that the expected result equals the result of your function, then all is good. Um, otherwise, it will fail. Now. One of, one of the things to notice is when JUnit generates this, uh, this code for you, it has no idea what the function is supposed to do. And so the default behavior is going to be a call to this fail function. So no matter what's going on up here, we're going to fail. So I want to, want to show you what this is going to look like when we have a JUnit failure. So I'm going to go up here to the run method, and I'm going to just run this, uh, run this file. And you see down here, Okay, no test passed, one test failed, and uh, we got a couple of a couple of failures. We actually got the uh, a failure here, asserting equals because we expected four and we returned zero. But uh, remember that function returned zero. So let me let me just show you this. I'm going to set this to zero, so it'll pass this test. But then we then we we're going to fail down here. At least that's the hope. So let's run this again run file shift F6 and okay so we still have a failure see the red here and uh, the test case there's a prototype and that's the message that came out of the fail so this is good this is exactly what we want we want things to fail um, in this case um, so now our job is to is to try and modify the code so that we can have a test case that passes. So, so we begin with a skeleton. We move to the to the uh, the J unit test, and then we move back to the code. So this is this is this is the essence of what we call agile development. So let's let's step back and we'll go back to our code here. Okay, so we're now looking at the uh, the original code that we want to write um, in a way that is correct. So let's come down here. What we need to do is we need to uh, convert our um, string variables into integer variables. So let's go to uh, uh, let's create a variable called uh, int one, and this is going to be uh, created using the integer class parse int. That's what we want. And notice this is uh, NetBeans is smart enough to know that we're somehow grabbing one of these parameters here. Okay. Now what I'm going to do here is I'm going to copy this line and we're going to do the same thing for the second integer. Okay, int1 equals an int2. And now I'm going to return int1 plus int2. So given the grand scheme of things, this looks good. However, as we'll see, there's a slight problem with this, but let's uh see if you can find it but I'm going to save this file and now we're going to go back to the test program and here we're going to be passing 2 and 2 our expected result is going to be 4 and we're going to assert equals and now since we actually have some code we're going to take out this to do review the code remove the default call and now all we have to do is work with this assert equals and we will see if we pass the test. Okay, so I'm going to run this file, and it's running, and the test passed. Okay, so things look good. Let's uh, let's try this. So now, <laughs> now what I'm going to do is I'm going to add another code because what we want to do in testing is we want to test all the possibilities where we can mess up. 
So I'm going to add this. I just made a copy of the function, and I'm going to change this name to add two because we can't have two functions by the same name. And now let's go to two plus three, and we'll see what what that is because here we had both two and two. So you want to change it up. You want to make you want to get the range of input variables. So two and three should be five. And let's run this, and we'll run the file and see what happens. And whoa, whoa, whoa. Notice we're at the 50% mark. The first test fa passed, but the second test did not. So this is uh, down here you see the, uh, the message. Expected five, but it returned six. What is wrong with this code? So now we were led to the false belief that our code worked. Let's go back to our program and see what the problem was. Well, the problem occurred because I was doing a little cut and pasting rather quickly and I was using the same, I was using S2 as my parameter, hope you caught that, uh, as int1 and as int2. So int1 should be S1, the result of parsing S1, and int2 should be the result of parsing S2. So I can, so now I save my my uh, my program I go back to the test program I run it and both tests pass 100% pass so I'm iterating I'm 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 I'm, I'm testing things out uh, generally you want to test for the extremes uh, with and you want to vary your input data now the other thing that can happen of course is we are going to make another test case right here just as we just copy the whole thing. I'm going to call this add three. And now, of course, what happens when the string is not an integer? Okay. Uh, what do we expect out of this thing? Well, let's maybe you might think, oh, zero. Maybe that's what we want. But of course, it's not going to happen. We'll run the file and now we get a failure because the test caused an error. You don't want your this message. This means that something happened in your code that is totally uh, unexpected. And of course the uh, the problem is it threw, let's go down here, we can see that the um, the code threw a number format exception. So now we go back to our our code and we need to ask ourselves or we need to ask the person paying for the development of this code what behavior do we want when one of these strings is a uh, is not an integer and maybe the behavior we want is to throw a number format exception and that's perfectly okay but our testing framework needs to have that registered in it so let's go back and we'll go to uh, this test and what we are going to say here is in uh, in parens in the in the uh, the test we're going to say expected equals number format exception class. I misspell that, so let's fix that here. Number format exception. So I expect this code to generate a number format exception when I pass in a variable that is uh, not an integer. And since there really is no expected result other than uh, this thing throwing an exception, I can take this code out and I can take this code out. Okay? So I've got a result, but when this happen, when this code executes on line 70, I would expect a number format exception. So let's see how that works. I'm going to run the code, and everything passed. I get 100% passage for that. So these are the two main things you need to be aware of when uh, when doing test-driven development. You want to start writing your tests and you can continue to add tests and it's really painless to, to run these tests but this is a way you can feel sure about the uh, the correctness of your code and it's a lot a lot better than writing system out print line tests in some main function because you can mess up and you don't want to mess up so this is Dr. C enjoy your J unit and go forth and test <laughs>